Welcome to this week's edition of the Gridiron, sponsored by Patriot Chevrolet. I'm your host, John Brown, with the head coach, Chad Brubaker. Springford fell this past week to Cumberland Valley 28-16. Coach, um, you know, quick thoughts on the game here, but once again, what I'm seeing a little bit is that, you know, you had to feel where you were pretty good at halftime going in, in the game, and then kind of another that slow start, third quarter, you don't really get much going offensively, and defense ends up being on the field a little bit more, so... Are you concerned about the pattern? But, you know, your general thoughts on the game. Sure. I mean, three games, one game is a situation. Three games is a pattern. You know, one thing you left out there, kind of a little bit of a letdown, both sides of the ball. Yeah. Because we allowed them to score late, went down in the, the field half, yeah. in the first half, and, and, and almost came within, you know, an inch. Really, the ball got knocked out because we fell on the ground in the end zone, but on a kind of a Hail Mary type play. Um, yeah, so we get the ball in the second half. We don't – we talked a lot about this week about offensive efficiency, getting ahead of the chains on first down, and there were a couple situations where that didn't happen. We didn't take what they, you know, what they offered, and we got behind the chains, and our defense was on the field, you know, again, too long, played well. You know, there were two kind of blown coverages or alignment issues in the secondary um, where we should have made plays. And also they gave up a long run where we were, you know, took on a block with the wrong shoulder. And it's amazing, though, little things. It's, yeah, well, we you keep do something wrong, one, something wrong one time and it can turn well, into like a, yeah. You in the stands or you wherever you are, you see a long run. Yeah. What we see is, hey, we took that on with the wrong shoulder there and now they got a big play. It's yeah. something that small. But... Um, circling back, you know, offensive efficiency is something that, that we keep trying to um, preach and we're not doing it as consistently as we feel we need to. Um, you know, we're not matriculating the ball down the field, as you like to say. Wow, fancy And, uh, you know, being efficient, you know, we've got to be efficient offensively. And, and obviously, you know, down two scores in the second half, we started to you know, chuck the ball around a little bit more. Um, not what we want to do. We didn't run the ball very well um, and, and had opportunities to do so, especially in the first half. But, you know, the game kind of, in our minds, dictated we got to score quickly mm -hmm. or as quickly as we can. And we just didn't, we just didn't do it. Um, so, you know, again, out of that game, you know, you, you, we played – well enough on the defensive side to win the game. Offensively, we certainly didn't. You know, yeah. we got to score more than 16 points and and uh, they try to beat a, a top 10 team like that. Now, is this a point in the season? Are you three, three games in, essentially like a third of the way done your season, that sort of thing? Are you saying, all right, what do we do well? What aren't we doing well? Let's get better at what we do well and maybe scrap some of the things we're not doing. Like, it's a little bit of like, let's look at the playbook and – not minimize it, but just really get better at something. Well, like what, like what I'm saying, you're talking about being efficiency, being yeah. more efficient, you know, using your resources to your maximum. Like, how, how's it going to get done? Well, it's just a matter of pra continuing to practice hard and, and really emphasizing things in, you know, certain things in practice. You know, and our, our playbook is, you know, we always have believed, like, here's the playbook. Yep. Um, and we're going to pick and choose things that we feel are most effective this week um, or each week and, and try to, you know, execute those things. Uh, right now we're making too many. Well, I'll tell you, I'll give you a good, for instance, we yeah. came out the first, first drive of the game. We stopped them, forced a punt. We lost the field position battle yeah, all night. Yeah, because you're inside the 20 now, yeah, too, right? We yeah. were inside the 10, I yeah. think that. But we lost the field position battle all night. That's the other part of it. We're not extending drives to flip the field. Yep. So we were playing, you know, way and, – and that's both sides of the ball. Like, hey, get a three and out, we get the ball back. That's special teams. That's all of it. So we started the game inside the uh, – our own 10. We – ineffectively ran uh, a screen play. We didn't communicate on the second play where all the players were not clear on what the actual play call was. We get a penalty on before third down. Yep. And then third down, we don't go through our progression and hit the player that we should have uh, in the passing game. So right there out of the jump, like, guys, that cannot happen. And yeah. for whatever reason, you know, we feel good about our week of practice. We come out. 
and you know xyz things happen and and all of a sudden you know we're three and out inside our own 10 and get yeah, a port, get the, and, and get now a they port, have the ball so and get a, going in you know and kind of shank a punt yeah. so all of a sudden they're like in scoring position from the inside the 30 right to begin so yeah. that's that's a that's a problem you know being we talked a lot about communication a lot about efficiency a lot about um efficiency on first down and uh yeah i mean there's nothing to do but work to get it right yeah. you know that's that's where we're at yeah I, I guess what i'm thinking is you're talking right there i'm sure you have like we talk nfl caught like they have a first 10 plays scripted like they're gonna run yeah. this. like it was it you're like oh we're inside the 10 we got to change what we're what well we, we don't wanted. script plays anyway but that's the reason why we don't yeah you know like I, you know, well, you can. I've tried it in the past, and you can script plays, and there's different ways you can do it. Like you, I mean, we kind of script the plays anyway. Like first down, second down. This hey, here's like the plays we like on yeah. third down. So that's kind of scripting. But like when you say, I, I never have understood how coaches can do that. Like you have, let's say we try to script the first ten plays. Well all of a sudden we're inside our own five yard line and you wanted to run a reverse on the second play. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, yeah, I got or, or, or you're second and 15 and yeah. you know, you wanted to run, you know, I don't know, whatever it is. And it just, it doesn't, it's got to jive with the game. The game situations oftentimes dictate what you're trying to do. So, all right, before we do highlights here, let's get back to the idea that we've, like you talked about one game versus three, the lack of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Urgency to start the second yeah, half. Yeah, that's right? a great word, too. Lack of urgency to start in all three games a little bit. And you talk about, you know, they say, oh, go in halftime, make some adjustments, talk about things. Well, does something need to happen differently now at halftime for you guys? To yeah, be we ready? need to come out in the second half and be urgent and, and execute. And, you, you know, it's crazy, too, because I just talked about it. That happened in the first quarter, too. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I could pinpoint it. You know, I would. I don't think... You know, our players are coming, our players want to win. It's not anything like that. And obviously we're sitting here saying that and we're still two and one and have beat, yeah. have beat actually uh, two pretty good teams, not in the way that we wanted to in a dominating fashion, but we still beat two pretty good teams, held our own, even though we didn't play very well offensively mm -hmm. or on special teams or in three different scenarios defensively minimum. Yeah. And we still were in the, you know, still the game. we still were in the game. Right. So when we hit our stride, when we're able, when we, like, it's going to be a yeah. sweet thing to see. We just got to yeah, get Yeah, it's not like we're pulling all the alarms and everything. Like, they right. were just like, okay, you know, we're two and one. Yeah. Let's see. And once again, big task for you guys this week. Another we are just trying to play our best game this week. Right. And that's all we can do. Let's play better than we did last week. Let's keep pushing it. And I think, you know, I think we will. Okay. Sounds good, Coach. All right, let's take a look at the offensive highlights from Springford, Cumberland Valley. This was, uh, I think, our second drive, maybe. And uh, this is our freshman tight end, Ryan Kirchner, um, who gets inside, gets inside the linebacker, does a good job. Um, it's good, a good catch too. It was good yeah, traffic. good throw and good catch. The protection was there. All right, here we are uh, in an empty formation. All right, you'll see Mason Scott come underneath and come under the defense there and get inside the two. On the next very next play, uh, this is where we your scored. protection's got to be really good when there you have no extra help, just the five linemen there. Well, I mean, sure. I mean, it, listen, they can always bring more than you can block. Yeah. So um, this is the very next play. This is Will Fish. This is that full house look you guys do a lot too. Yeah, we did a nice job um, blocking Luke Pajevich. You'll see, get, makes a nice block. Uh, Mike Bendowski's there to help uh, seal the inside, or seal that, and yeah, we Luke get inside. Yeah, Luke kind of gets two guys in the play there right Yeah. Here. Really nice job. This is in the fourth quarter. Again, we get down. Now we're inside the 50. We scored on this drive. Um, really nice job. And that's putting the ball only where, you know, like that's got to be yeah, a that's, really good. We got to do a better job of, of, you know, separation with our receivers. We talked about that quite a bit yesterday. And here we're in the goal, our goal line set. And Matt hits uh, 
Mike Bendowski for the touchdown. So um, wide open, wide open on that. I'm sure. Now, once again, there's like no kicking for you guys on, on well, Friday night. Our, our kicker uh, slipped on our practice field down. We practice on the lower field, and yeah. I've been I've been saying for quite some time that some improvements need to be made to that field, and uh, it was you know wet and the grass doesn't have the root system it needs, and yeah. he slipped and tweaked his knee a little bit. Unable to go for you. We guys. had a, we ha we do have another kicker. Ryan Fields handled the kickoffs, but I didn't think it was fair to him uh, to throw him in there in a big game like this to you know. So we just decided to go for two the first time. And if we didn't get it, we were going to go for two the second time. Mm -hmm. If the game was closer, we would have we would have trusted him, you know, to try to, to kick, kick it. If you needed but we it. weren't going to put him in that situation from the start and kind of, if it doesn't go right, you know, spiral the yeah, wrong yeah, way. So. Right. Good stuff, Coach. Yeah. All right. We got to talk defense, all right? Sure. All right. Make sure you stay tuned through the commercial break here as we bring you the defensive highlights from Springford, Cumberland Valley. Thank you, Dr. Collier, for the help yesterday after school. Have you experienced great customer service from a Springport employee? Want to send a special thanks out to the stranger who paid for your morning coffee? Don't worry about it today. Somebody paid it forward. Oh, nice. Thank you. Many there thanks you is unsolicited acknowledgement of anyone in the Springford community who simply deserves recognition. Thank you. I appreciate you coming in. That was so good. And that was always so nice. That was delicious. Visit the Springford webpage to submit your many thanks. Welcome back to the Gridiron, sponsored by Patriot Chevrolet. I'm your host, John Brown, with the head coach, Chad Brubaker. All right, coach, before we do defense, uh, I saw the videos on the Twitter machine about the young kids. It looked like they had a great time, youth night, running through the arch, that sort of thing. So that was a sure success for you guys. Yeah, that, it's always fun, you know, with those guys. They get fired up and they're bouncing around and as we come into the stadium. So um, we bring them in the gymnasium. In Give the them the talk, hear the talk, yeah talk a little bit about playing multiple sports and having fun with your buddies and that's what it's really about um, so we did that um, and then they go out on the field and line the field so I think they had a good time a lot of a lot of, a lot of kids a lot of screaming it sounded like <laughs> yeah. as they're running through that arch right all right um, what else you got going on what do you got for announcements going on here Ooh, announcements um, I don't know. Beef and we beverage have, coming up soon? Oh, that's October 1st. Yeah, okay. at the Royce Ford VFW. Look at me Look bringing at that one up there. Good for you. Yep. Twitter account or Twitter machine. Facebook. Yep. Uh, you can get more information about that. Um, reminder, you can only use electronic tickets for on our games. Friday night yeah. in our games. Ticket it's a little spigot. controversial. Ticket spigot. Yeah, a little controversial. Are you aware of the controversy regarding that? Uh, no, I think there's, there's above our pay grades. That's sort of it thing. is, it is. It is not a football decision, um, but there, you know, some of the things that I hear are, you know, well, I don't, you know, I have a brick phone. Or yeah, I listen, have, this, yeah. <laughs> you're trying to stay out of it. I, I am 100% staying out of this one. These questions are way, like, I'm here. No cap. You might be like, and like there are people that are like there. I'm yeah, not yeah, even, I'm I not getting you. in that type, type of list of what's going on there. So, I respect that. Yeah. I'm just staying out of this one right here. Like sometimes when you talk <laughs> about like things that happen in a game and like hankies that fly, I, I stay out of those. I stay uh, out of those conversations yeah. too. Well, there was one hanky that should have been thrown <laughs> really poor on Friday. That I was, yeah. All right. So let's talk defense here. Now, once again, like, you know, defense, you talked about playing good enough to win a game out there for you. But I think you make some good points there about, too, like, you know, if they're driving and then they eventually cause a punt, it is putting you guys behind the chains. And that's so much where you got to go offensively. Like, well, we got to put some drives together. Oh, absolutely. And not always score, but once again, the three and outs, it's almost like yeah. a battle in the games right now. Which team could have more three and outs? Does your defense <laughs> have more three and outs versus? Yeah, well, it's always that. Yeah. It's always that. And, you know, again, um, I think that we just, I, I, it's all, it's, it's a machine, yeah. right? And every part has to, every part has to do its job. And, you know, you leave the defense on for 10 more plays than the offense is on. Um, we do have some guys that are going both ways. And that's the other thing we've been trying to, we've been trying to manage that a little bit in the first few games of the season. It's been difficult, you know, at some positions, the, the depth that we wish we had is not there yet because um, the young guys aren't quite ready to, to take, you know, give some guys some breaks. Um, 
and and you know we've had some injuries at certain positions, uh, which makes it worse. So there's are some guys like Zach Zollers and Zach Zollers and Gage Swanger uh, and Will Fish who are on the field quite a bit. Yeah, like they're really big pieces of your offense. Yeah, and you want them to be really big parts. We need to do a better job. You know, we talked about that on Sunday night, or I talked about that. Like we need to do a better job of giving those guys breaks. However, we do it. Friday night we did it formationally. Like we got Will Fish off the field by going empty, all right, and then we, you know, went back and we could get somebody else a break. But we need to do a better job of getting guys breaks as well. Yeah. All right. So let's keep, talk, keep talking some defense here a little bit here. So, you know, we've talked about last week how their quarterback is kind of doing it all, and I felt you did a pretty good job of keeping him, you know, contained, not going crazy out there. You know, talk about this young – we talked about the young secondary for you yeah. a little bit out there, and you talked about in the first segment a couple of one coverages, and I think you're playing a team this week that's going to even throw it more than Cumberland Valley too, right? That is correct. All right, so talk about this young secondary and where you see them after three Well, weeks. you know, we – if first of all, you got to be aligned properly. And the two touchdowns, there were alignment issues um, by one or more guys. Um you know, our front seven did a tremendous job. We didn't, they get rid of the ball quickly. They run the ball. And so we didn't, when you talk about pressure, we did get some pressure, but that's a double-edged sword because um, their quarterback could run and is very willing to run. Um, and a couple times, like all of a sudden, I said this in the paper, third and long becomes third and short. Although they said third and two becomes third and short. I swear I didn't say I that. Think they're in- Third and two is short as it is. It already is, yeah. 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 So I doubt I said that. But anyway, um, there was one time in particular, I remember, I think it's their first touchdown, where we had them third and long, and he got out of the pocket, and now it's – or I'm sorry, second and long, and he got out of the pocket, and now it's third and two. So he didn't make any long play. He did run – he had a touchdown run. But he didn't run for 40 yards on one play, but he ran enough – and was smart enough and, and wily enough to make it a better down and distance for them. Yeah, I thought he did a good job. Like, Cumberland Valley did a really good job. They didn't have a lot of negative plays all night. You know, once again, they're, they're moving yeah. forward, they're moving forward, they're moving forward. Like, you know, there wasn't a lot of zero gains, losses in the plays. They were always no. chipping away I mean, at we their We had yards. one sa- – well, that's not true because we had eight tackles for loss. Wow, okay, I wouldn't have thought that. Like, wa- watching it, you know, yeah, I wouldn't have thought was, of been that. Eight tackles for loss and a fumble in the backfield okay, that we got right. too. But here's what I would say. It's three games into the season. We have not forced a fumble. We have not forced a turnover. Meaning we got a fumble on Friday night. It was unforced. Like they, he, they did. He, and we, had a, we got a fumble recovery against Governor Mifflin on a muff punt unforced. So we've got to generate turnovers too. Like yeah. that's the other way to flip the field is to get turnovers, force turnovers. You know, they, they, we, did, we had a turnover on offense where I, I can't fault our kid too much because a kid put a helmet right in the back of the ball. Yeah. Like, you know, we got we to gotta, we gotta try to protect it better, but I'm not going to be, you know, was it a blatant mistake? Yeah. We've got to do that. We've got to force turnovers on defense. And that was kind of hard, too, because when you did get that turnover, you know, from Cumberland Valley, you turned it, you know, you gave it, you gave it right back then, too. I think I'm pretty. Mm, it wasn't on that series. Okay. It wasn't on that series, but, um, yeah, we did give the ball right back. Yeah, so, all right, Coach, well, good stuff right there. Let's take a oh, look. Oh, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah, that's what you're I'm right. saying. So, you get a turnover, right. and yep. then you give the you're ball right. back, and yep. then, you know, like, so, tell me it's a. Yeah, the it's point. a wash. Yeah, it's a wash. Oh, good point. I like that. It's a good one right there. All right, let's take a look at the defensive highlights from Springford, Cumberland Valley. All right, they've lined up a lot in trips. We knew that. What a great job here by Brandon there Goss. Go. There's one of those negative. That ones. was a tackle for a loss. Yeah. Brandon Goss is that uh, defensive tackle there. He gets inside um, and really meets the running back three yards in the backfield. This is fourth down, so a big play. We get pressure. Should have had the sack there. I don't know why we're sliding past him, but we did force him up. And, and get the sack. I mean, when you have... What's a, this, like a corner safety blitz? For no, it's an outside backer. Outside backer but you ha- there's nothing... There there's, I don't know what we're doing there. He can't see you. Tag Those him. are the hits you want, right? Correct. That's a, that's a possibility of a turnover. Here's another one. Actually, I guess we got two turnovers, but most of them... most Both of them were unforced. They were... Yeah, that's them, some bad exchange right there. Yeah. 
Just a bad exchange. We get the ball. Again, would have been nice if that was on the other 20. Um, here they try to run quarterback draw. Mike Bendowski, um, Zach Zollers, all those guys are there making that play. Luke Pajovic, the whole defensive front was there, basically. And, you know, this is, they run, they, they don't run a ton of plays on offense. They, they, they run out of different sets, but we did a nice job here kind of extending it, not letting him go to the gap that he want, wants. And, um, you know, he had to bounce it right into our, uh, the rest of our guys. All right, Coach. Well, Cumberland Valley's in the books. We're on to another District 3 opponent, all right? Yep. All right, make sure you stay tuned through the commercial break, and we will preview the game with Mannheim Township. If you love them enough to relearn math so you can teach them math, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Welcome back to the Gridiron, sponsored by Patriot Chevrolet. I'm your host, John Brown, with the head coach, Chad Brubaker. All right, coach, before we talk Mannheim Township, point of clarification on the show. Gold card, free. If you're over 60, you just have to fill out a card, or you can fill out the card on the online machine. It's on the district website, and you have to live in the district. Makes sense. There is, so there it is for everybody out there, gold card cl uh, clarification for this. There you go. Those that are Spring Ford grads of, like, the 90s and stuff like that, you used to go be, have a gold card where you kind of, like, walk around the schools like a free pass. That's, that's no longer around. So people that might be watching that graduates of the late 80s. Yeah, see, well. Talk to Mr. Rodenball. He's huge into the gold card. He knows exactly what the gold card is. All right, so there's gold card. We've talked about that. All right, so we got another powerhouse, essentially, District 3, Mannheim Township. They played Cumberland Valley 35, 38, something like that. High scoring affair, if I remember off that. So they're obviously, they're going to be well prepared coming here Friday night. They have a high-powered offense. Yeah. They have a very good quarterback. Um, we know him from having played last year. Gets the, rid of the ball real quickly. Um, Cumberland Valley came in ranked 10th in max preps. Uh, Manheim Township is ranked 8th in max preps coming in this week. Unfortunately, we helped bump uh, Cumberland Valley up to 4th in the state okay. after our win. Which I guess, I don't know, if, they're, if you're going to lose, they must think we're pretty good if yeah. they go up 6 spots. Or else everybody <laughs> lost above them. Yeah, um... Regardless, so, yeah, Manheim Township is very good. They have a lot of good receivers. All their receivers are big, tall. Um, they're good defensively. In that game that Cumberland Valley played against Manheim Township, Cumberland Valley had like 200 less yards. They won on a couple special teams um, plays. So. Safus, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. All right, Coach, let's take a look at Manheim Township on offense. All right, this is Mannheim Township against Harrisburg. You see how the quarterback, they love running these tunnel screens. Um, he gets the ball out of his hands real quickly. You know, they run a lot of empty sets like this, no running backs. You see, again, the linemen are downfield. Uh, Over get pursuit, the, yep. Yep, get the ball out quickly. Um, so we're going to have to do a really good job of pursuit, a really good job of reading the linemen's um, techniques all right Boom. this this was a big mistake by the harrisburg secondary they bit you know that's what they'll do so that looks like the screen and then they run the screen go and you know make a play down the sideline quarterback runs a little bit not as much uh as cumberland valley they don't make a like a habit of that you know um but they want it on the 
one of the last plays of the game. All right, so right there, game winner with under 30 seconds to go. Mannheim Township actually against Cumberland Valley was on the Cumberland Valley five with a minute left. They score, they win. Cumberland Valley came up with a couple big plays. Um, and then Mannheim Township beat Dallas Town at home in week two. So, um, you know, they could be easily 3-0. Three three and, and everybody that, know, if you know PA football, you know what Harrisburg football is. I mean, they're, yeah. they're not another one of those District 3 mainstays you see them yeah. year after year. That's, I mean, that's a huge win for the township down there. Yeah. All right. Um, mascot, Mannheim Township? Blue, Blue streaks. streaks. Blue Streaks. Good stuff. Good job. All right. Um, talk to me what you're going to see defensively from them. Um, they play, they're very multiple. Um, you know, they've started out, uh, they've started out their three games playing a 4-3, and then they uh, eventually switched to a 3-4 for whatever reason. Um, you know, they have players up front. They can, the defensive line is, is not huge, but they are strong and they penetrate well. Uh, their linebackers run well. Their secondary is disciplined. Um, you know, they're, they're two and one and have played, you know, Dallas town has been a, a power in York yeah. for a long time. So, you know, they played three very good teams. You know, we're playing teams that have the same mentality as us, you know, go man, schedule, go play, go yeah. play, go play great teams and, and prepare yourself for your league and eventually for the playoffs. So, you know, they played three pretty good teams. They're playing us on Friday. Hopefully they think we're pretty good. Um, Cumberland Valley's done the same thing. So, yeah, I mean, we're playing like-minded like minded programs. Yeah. And we want to get better. So yeah, like you said, you, get, do you don't get better playing against Sisters of the Poor, right? You do not. All right, let's take a look at Mannheim Township on defense. So this is early playing 4-3 here. They do a really nice job of filling gaps um, and come off and, and make the play. Uh, Harrisburg... The one thing, you know, this game was pretty hot. You can see, like, there's a lot of guys, those wide receivers at the top of the screen. Yeah. They didn't move. They were conserving energy a little bit. But, you know, early in the game, they're in an even front and get a sack here. Or, I'm sorry, not a sack. Um, tackle for tackle loss. Tackle for loss. Harrisburg went empty, all right, near the end of the half. They were um, real close here, but really nice play by the defensive back to rip Rip the, rip the Harrisburg wide receiver down and, and separate the ball. So this is later in the game. They do blitz a lot out of their 3-4, all right? Um, but, Looks you know, like they get just a an example, there, yeah. yep, got a turnover, strip the ball. Um, so they do a lot of nice things. They're well coached by Mark Evans, um, and who's been there quite a long time now. Uh, they got some famous alumni over there at Mannheim Township, I think, too. Near Jim Farrick. Oh, I, I knew you were going to go to the golf angle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, maybe any other. Is that Amanda Balionis? Is there the Amanda Render? She's on the CBS. Is she from Mannheim Township, too? Couldn't tell you. All right, I'm going to look. I'm going to Google one. That, I'm going to Google that one. I'm going to research that one for next week. I'm Please. trying to think out of, out of uh, I don't know. Can't remember it all. Yeah. Too tough. Tom Legath, the uh, Exeter AD. Does that count as a famous alum? Uh, I don't know who Tom <laughs> is, so no, I'm not going to count him as one of the guys. All right. All right, Coach. Well, best of luck to you and the crew Thanks. Friday night. Make sure you tune in next week as we recap the game with Manheim Township. For the head coach, Chad Brubaker, I'm John Brennan. See you next time on the Gridiron.